Hi, everybody. Latest edition of the Bison Video Blog up here at the Shack, brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo, North Dakota State football team, back on the field this Saturday. The Illinois State Redbirds come to town, winners of three in a row for Brock Spack's team, which we'll chat about in a second. Jeffrey off a of bye week. The Bison still sit fourth nationally in the polls. Obviously, the news of Phoenix Sproul's departure looks like Jalen Sundell, the starting center, is going to be out for a while after undergoing foot surgery on a reaction fracture. So Brandon Westberg is going to be the guy, it looks like, for the long term going forward for the Bison at center. How long have I been covering Bison football? 25 years? Something, thought, something seems like that. 27? Like seems like six. <laughs> reaction fracture. Yeah, I know. There's a new yeah, one. Yeah, I've never one. heard of that one. So Westberg has played and, and done well at the center yes. spot, I think, over the last two years. And I think we got some news that, too, Jalen Sundell is going to be back. Yes. for another year yep. of eligibility. And I don't think most likely at center if when he comes back. Because yeah. I think Westberg has really taken command yes. of that position. He's been very good at it. They'll need a left tackle next year with yep. Cody Mock on. So yep. perhaps. And, and Jalen Sundell came to this <laughs> he was program. A, yeah, he's a tackle. Yep. Came as a tackle. So just looking ahead. Boy. But yeah, let's um, let's keep it to, to this week. <laughs> I understand that. But one game at a time, Colfax. One thing I wanted to see – on NDSU and, and and addressing the run defense because yeah. they're number four in, in the country, but 62nd in run defense wow. nationally. And that's, you know, it's right in the middle. Yep. It's exactly that's exactly right how in, they've played yeah. is right in the middle. It's been pretty exactly average. Exactly average. And for this program and anybody to make a run at the yeah. playoffs and a deep run, you really have to be good at run defense. We've seen that over the years. We've seen that in nine national titles in yep. 11 years. They've always been really stout in that area yep. for the most part. And this year, I just it's just uh, several factors, mainly a couple people leaving and just other injury, guys, injury and, mean, and other guys not playing up to snuff. It's something to keep an eye on, obviously, going forward. For an Illinois State team, as I mentioned, that's coming in, won three in a row. You were after Brock Spack's job, apparently, oh, come early on. this that's, season. That's a little but strong, I will, say, I will say this, though. There certainly were, I think, verified rumors for that, simply because sure. new president, new athletic director, and it's been – a few years, SPAC made the playoffs. They made the quarterfinals with James Robinson in 2019. In the last couple of years, that COVID year, remember, they shut down bad. things. That was they tough were, on They them. were really depleted for the team here. And it looks like maybe he's finally found a quarterback, ran it through the transfer portal, in Zach Anikstad, the former Gopher signal caller. He started as a true freshman walk-on for the yes. Gophers in 2018 and never really saw much after that. that was Tanner Morgan's job after that. Well, yeah. and, and, and he's a good quarterback. Yeah. He's, he's not great. He, I think he makes the plays. It's probably what they needed. Yeah. Because they've been looking and talking about SPAC. <sighs> Illinois State's been looking for a quarterback since since Trey Roberson left. And, that, and Trey Roberson, remember, was a transfer as well. They haven't really homegrown a guy since Matt Brown, and that was in the early 2010s. He was a four-year guy right. at Illinois State. Since that, Roberson, Brady Davis was a transfer. I mean, it just it yeah. has not worked out. Now they've gone another transfer route, So, and we know success there centers on that. They have won three in a row. They won on the road at Northern Iowa. They knocked off Indiana State last week. Uh, they nearly beat Southern Illinois the week before that. They're, they're squeaking out games. It may not be pretty, but they're winning the football games. Well, that's what counts. And when, when South you're, Dakota there as well. Yeah, and, and when you're Illinois State and looking to get back in the conversation, yeah. and now they are in the conversation. I would say 5-2 and two they are, yeah. yeah and 3-1, and one, they're yep. tied with NDSU. This is a big swing game, and what I like – to want to see from NDSU looking forward. And this is a big week in this regard. Okay, are they just going to be good or are they going to be better? And, uh, you know, well, you the talk, bye weeks, they've been great. You talk about the first game sets the stage for the season. To me, this sets the stage for November, this game. No doubt. This is a huge deal. If, if you fall flat and then maybe the rest of the season might be on the road on Thanksgiving or host a playoff game and Thanksgiving, and, and that's going to be mm. a, a tough road. But, Bam. Yeah, it's, I just think this week is that point. big. When you look at it, and you, I know you watched a ton of football like I did this weekend. Just It doesn't seem there are very good teams in the FCS, nationally I'm talking about. I don't know if there's anybody great. Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I didn't see anybody great. I think South Dakota State is very defense good. Yep. Is, is as close to great as anything out there. And they lost their top player in Adam Bach in that game at UND on Saturday. Yeah, they've got injuries yeah. they're dealing with. And uh, you know, I watched the Big Sky teams. Uh, you know, Nobody really jumped off no. the page, as they say. I, I thought there were some good players. Uh, Sac State has a couple of good players. Montana looked pretty average they're down to their backup yep. quarterback I, they are in like four plays the rest of the game i mean <laughs> so uh, you know weber uh, looking for a long snapper yeah, apparently I think so just, yeah well and that just begs the question now do you open this up to maybe seven eight teams that could win this or is it still four or five like we normally think well after south dakota state okay i, I think they're right now just a, 
a, a legitimate they were clear the head cut, and shoulders favorite, I would clear think. Clear-cut yep. favorite, yep. no I question. Agree with that. South Dakota State, I think you're going to have to go through Brookings yeah. now to get to Frisco. After that, I, I, you're, I, five, six, seven teams, you're right, and we haven't said that no. in a while. Heck, we've been down to three maybe some years. The fact that they have this many, I think, lends credence more to what the portal has done, that you see guys moving up to the next level and having yeah, a lot of success. Players There's a ton left. of guys that have yeah. left FCS that are playing that I think has watered down. Uh, the competition level, and no one's been able to set themselves apart. You're right. I'm with you on South Dakota State. It is up for grabs at number two. It really is. The Bison could very well play their way into that at nine and two. It's not out of the realm of possibility. They could still be a high seed come for the FCS. I, I think they need somebody to beat Sac State. Yes. I mean, Sac yep. State's still unbeaten. And they play. They, they have, have an Idaho F- and Weber State coming up. And they have an FBS win, they so do. that helps. So, uh, the Bison will need some help to get to number two. It's going to be a fascinating last four weeks. As Jeff said, I think it's a window into this, into November, what happens on Saturday against the Redbirds. Of course, you can watch the game on WDAY. Bison Game Day will get you started at 10 a.m. on WDAY. Then our kickoff show at 2.20. Then the football game to the Redbirds and the Bison at 2.30. Illinois State has not beaten NDSU. You want to take a guess on that one? No. <laughs> 2010 was the last time the Redbirds were able to knock off the They played some close ones over the last couple of years, and we we're guaranteed probably another good one with the mustache coming back to Fargo and Brock's Does he have the stash? It's back. All He's right. there. With Jeff Colt back, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Bison video blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.